So have you ever had that problem where for some unknown reason your laser just shuts off? That's the problem I'm having. I've actually had it for quite a while. I've just never said anything. And it seems to be that every time something is plugged into this outlet or the outlet I have on my ceiling and I turn something on like you saw in the video, I'll turn on my extractor fan. I disconnect the laser. It, it's like it shorts it out. And if I use the drill press, also connected to this socket up here or this one, it does the same thing. And I kept wondering, why is it doing that? I'm no electrician, but I'm starting to think, and I hope this is correct, is these things aren't grounded. I found that out, you know, watching videos. And I'm sure anybody else that has one is aware of that now too. So I'm going to try and ground this and hopefully this fixes the problem. I don't know if it will, but it doesn't make any sense why every time I turn something else on, it disconnects the laser. I mean, right now I don't even have a program running. The computer is on, but I'm not even hooked up to light burn or anything. So it's just the laser is on by itself. And if I turn something on that draws a little bit of power, it disconnects it. So that's what this video is going to be. It's going to be an experiment. I Maybe somebody else has this same problem and you're just not sure what it is. And since now I know that these things aren't grounded properly and there's an instruction video, I'm going to have to watch that again, on how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and ground this and we're going to try it again and see if that fixes the problem. So stick around and we will see if this actually works. We're going to need three wires. So the first one is about the length of this panel right here. So just hold it up there and give yourself a little bit of room if you want, a little bit of leeway. And we'll cut that off. Then we're going to just hold the wire from corner to corner. That's good. And we'll cut that. And we need two of those. So just hold the other one up to the first one you did. There we go. Cut that. Now we need to strip about a half inch off of the end of each of these. Or however, whatever you feel comfortable with. You're just going to have to add some connectors to it. So. Maybe about a half inch, three quarters of an inch. And just twist the ends. Get a couple connectors here. We have to use the blue ones. You need to find the right size hole. If you're, if you're not sure what size you need, uh, just pull us this screw out right here because that's one of the screws that you need to use and see if you have the right size. And I just know for the size of the wires and the connector that I'm using, I need the blue ones. Either do I have enough? I have a lot of blue ones, but oh, there's another one. And there's another one uh, for starters. So we're going to connect these three cables together. We're going to connect the short one together one side. And the other end of that one, we're going to connect the other long one. So it'll kind of look like that one we're done. Now to me, this length is just enough to get through here. I could take it off and cut it short again, but which I might do. Take a little bit more off of there. There we go. Now you can use the wire crimpers, but I've always liked using uh, vice grips for something like this because it really squeezes it good and tight. Loosen it up, tighten it a little more, and then do it again. 
I don't know. I, I just like the way that that does it. So that's just the way I'm going to do it. Connect these two together. Trim a little bit off. So now we got the two long ones connected together. We're going to connect one of these to the short one. We'll leave the other end of the short one with nothing on it for now. And the other end, which I know is going to connect to the top of the laser here, is a really small bolt. So I gotta find a one with a smaller hole in it that I know will fit that. They don't really tell you that when you Watch the video. But you're going to connect one to this back left corner and aim it in line with the cable here. But that is a much smaller bolt, like I said, than all the other ones that are on here. So make sure you put a smaller connector on there. Don't use the same size as the rest of them. Okay, so as you can see, I've already cut all the zip strips off. And so the first one we're going to do is connect one end, the end with the smaller connector onto it, to this back left one. And in the video when I watched it, theirs was a Phillips screwdriver. Mine's an Allen key. And I think this is a, hold on one second, I'll let you know. This is a two millimeter Allen wrench. that on there you don't want to over tighten this when you tighten it back down and just remember to have it go toward the cable so you can feed it into this harness okay that should be good okay so after we have that one connected we're going to find the middle where the two long ones are connected together. And we're going to connect it to this bolt right here, or this nut, or screw, this screw right here. And this is a Phillips. So I can see my harness is coming in this way. So I'm going to try to put it in and lean it tore with these two harnesses. Okay. Now the other end, we'll follow that around and we will connect it to this little screw Right in the front, right in the middle of those wiring harnesses. And you might want to watch because your frame might drop a little bit.
slide our connection inside. Make sure that lines up with the harness. Okay, so our next wire is this wire. Now we're going to remove this black wire off the switch here. And the way they want you to do it is to cut the length of this to match that. Tuck that inside of that little hole there and try to put that back on. That's going to be a tight squeeze. I don't know if this is actually going to work. So. That's what they want you to do is to ground it to there. I'm not even sure if this will even go in there. Yeah, that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the wire back a little bit here, wrap my ground around it there, and then probably solder that connection. Melt that through there, make sure it gets into the cables. Yeah, that looks good. I mean, it's just a ground. It's... Yep, that should be sufficient. Get a little piece of solder off of here. Grab a little bit of electrical tape and I don't have any so I'm gonna have to do that later let me just reconnect this back to the proper terminal so now comes the fun part we need to tuck all of these cables inside of these harnesses they make a special tool for it and of course I don't have it, so time to do it old school. And I'm starting to think that maybe I should have done that before I connected these, because it might be easier just to slide them through one end and have it come out the other end. But since I didn't do it that way, now I'm going to have to start tucking them in. So I picked up a bag of 520 zip strips and I can see some really small ones in here so I've had these things quite a long time but they do last it's always good to have zip strips laying around and for now I just need three so I'm going to reconnect this top one up here You got one more right there. Make sure we're not putting any undue pressure on our system here, on I mean the wires.
Okay, so as you can see right there, we got our last ground connection to the actual frame itself. Now we just need to do a little continuity check and make sure that we have a good connection from all the different ground spots that we put on. So time to check that. Strip a little end of this off. Great, my multimeter is missing. All right, give me a second, I gotta find it. Okay, so I am frustrated to say the least. I've got everything grounded the way they asked. I mean, you guys saw me do it. I got everything. I even got a, the ground itself to the frame going into an outlet on the ground side of the outlet. It's grounded the way they asked. And I'm still having the same issue. Um, when I turn this switch on for this blower motor, which this switch is only mounted here. It's it, This has nothing to do with this room. It goes from there, down here, into the switch. And from the switch, I have this with an extension cord on the other side of my house. So far away in another room. It has nothing to do with this circuit in this room. But yet, every time I turn this thing on, right now it's okay. And five out of every six times I shut it off, I will trip the switch again. Oh, of course it's not going to do it now that you're watching. Okay, that makes no sense because now it's not doing it. I'm going to try this one more time. Let it run for a few minutes or a minute. See, you just did it. And I just don't, I can't figure out why. I mean, I disconnected everything that's possibly hooked up to this. The fans, everything. The only thing that's plugged in is the laser itself here. The laser is plugged into here by its USB. Uh, this is the power for the computer. This is the ground for the laser. And the laser is plugged in over here. So everything is separate. And then this blower motor, like I said, is up there wired to the other end of the house. So maybe somebody else can understand how this is possibly happening. Why am I still having this issue? And like you just saw, I don't know when it's going to do it. It just does it for randomly. Um, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Uh, I'm all game for anything. So the laser works great. Everything still works the way it's supposed to work. I just don't know why every time I shut this off, never know if I'm going to deactivate the laser. I mean, granted, this should be on while I'm burning. So the chances of me shutting it off are slim. But once in a while, I have shut it off if I'm filming something else and I don't want the sound of the fan. But there's really no reason that this switch should have anything to do with this when it's not even in the same room, the power that it's coming from. I don't know. But I'm going to keep using the laser. Because uh, while I was trying to figure this all out, my Y-axis showed up. So I put that together off camera there's plenty of videos on how to do this but i still have to hook it up to the laser go into gerbil change some settings so i'm looking forward to that i'm gonna practice on this jar right here i've already got it painted up and hopefully that works because so far i've been unsuccessful trying to burn on glass so but i'm gonna try it again but black nail polish i put two coats on it it's what i've heard i should do so i'm looking forward to that and if that works, then I'll have another video out on doing that. But I think that's where I'm going to end this one. So please, if you have any idea on why this is doing what it's doing, please let me know. Uh, I look forward to your suggestions, and I'll see you in the next video.